Coming up on Hands on iOS, I am going to show you how to set up and manage your group chat. Yes, multiple conversations with multiple people and things can get a little loud. Hands on iOS is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. So if you're rocking an iPhone or an iPad or one of those devices, chances are you have by this point set up a group chat. Yes, it is the conversations we have with multiple iPhone users. And you know, most of the time it's pleasing, it's pleasant, it's lovely, it's wonderful. But every once in a while, it can get a little bit annoying and there may be some changes that you wanna to make to the group chat. So I thought it would be good to talk about that. Let's dig in. All right, so on this iPhone, I have a group chat set up. Uh, it's between me, fake me, and my partner. And currently, it's just a conversation between the three. So normally, with a group chat, you would start one up by hitting the new messages icon in the top right corner, and then adding the people that you wanted to have a conversation with, maybe mom, and uh, your sister, and a brother, or whomever it happens to be, the people you went to college with, the people you went to high school with, uh, your neighbors, doesn't matter, it's whatever group you want them to be, but you'd add them there. And as long as everybody has iPhones, then the little arrow, that blue arrow down at the bottom, that send icon, will remain a blue send icon. If you added someone who does not use an iPhone and is therefore not registered for iMessage, then that icon would change to a green arrow. And then the conversation would be an MMS message as opposed to an iMessage conversation. So this is, of course, for setting up conversations with other people who have iPhones. So we will go ahead and hit that cancel button in the top right corner because I already have a group message set up. I can tap into the group message and see the conversation that's taken place so far. And in the top middle of the screen, you can see that it is a conversation with two people. And so I can go in and tap on that little section that says two people. See that little arrow next to the two people? That's how you know that it's something that has more information. I tap on that and down slides some more information. I could set up an audio call with all of these people. I could set up a group FaceTime with all of these people by simply tapping the FaceTime button or the audio button, or my favorite button, that little I, that lowercase I, it is the info button. When we tap on that, we can see more information about this group message. With this, I can do multiple things. I can give a name to the group chat. That's one of my favorite things to do. So let's call this one, hands on iOS chat and I'll tap done. I'm going to tap done in the top right because I want to show you something down here at the bottom. You now see it says you named the conversation hands on iOS chat at this specific time in everyone else's group message. They will also see a little notification there, a little note there that says you, in this case, the person that's on this. So it would say Micah named the conversation hands on iOS chat today at 3.01 p.m. So everybody does see that when you change the group chat name. So everyone will be aware. If I tap that button in the top right corner, that info button, now it's got a name. I can change the name at any time. Everybody else in the group chat can change the name if they want to. And that provides that information there. If I tap on either my name or Sebastian's name, then it would pop into that contact information in my phone. You can see that next to my name, there's an option to FaceTime call, there's an option to send a message, or there's an option to place a normal audio call. To add more people to the group chat, I just tap add contact, and then I can add the contact that I want to add. I can type in a number if I know it, or from my contacts, I can, you know, start to type in the name mom or whomever it happens to be, and then hit return to add them to the conversation. I'll hit cancel because this is all I want in the group chat. And then there are these two options in the middle, send my current location and share my location. This is fantastic. If you've got multiple people in a group chat and you're all going out to some place and you know, you're, you're getting ready to get together and you are wondering, okay, where is Tanya? Tanya said she was going to be here. Tanya's not here yet. Where's Tanya? You can say, Tanya, send us your current location. Tanya would tap that button. The phone would pull the current location and send it to the group chat. Everybody could pop in and see where they are. Now, how does that, how is that different from share my location? Well, share my location is an option 
option that lets you share your location for a given period of time. That means it's not the current location that the person is at, but actually a, and the ability to sort of track the person's location over time. If I tap share my location right now, I can choose to do it for a short period of time or a long period of time, say share for one hour, share until the end of today, or share indefinitely. Then everyone in this group chat would be able to tap in and see my current location. If everybody in the group chat shares their location, then you will actually see a little area pop up at the top of the conversation with a map and you can see everybody's icon and know where they are at that given time. Great if you're going to a concert or if you are planning on walking around at a park or something like that and everybody's in different places or for families. It's a great way to make sure that you know where everybody is should you need to. And then easily my favorite feature, I get added to a lot of group chats and there are lots of conversations and every time someone sends a new message in that conversation, then you get notified for it. Uh, I can think of a number of people who will choose to leave a group chat instead of doing a much simpler thing whenever they're annoyed by the number of messages, the frequency of messages that are coming in. And that simple thing is this switch right here, hide alerts. If I turn on hide alerts, it will stop sending me notifications every time someone sends a message to the group chat. That way I can pop in whenever I want to see the messages that I wanna see, ignore the messages that are not for me, that are for someone else, and not have to worry about bzz, 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 getting buzzed over and over again at work. And of course, at any time I can go in and turn that off. I start to get the notifications again. And that's frankly what I do with my group chats. I turn it on and off depending on what I'm doing and whether it is a time where I can get all those notifications and I'm happy to or I'm not. Lastly is the leave this conversation option. This is if you become a part of a group chat that you don't want to be a part of anymore. Choosing leave this conversation would allow you to leave this conversation. Because I started this group chat, leaving this conversation is not possible. The one way to leave the conversation is by simply swiping in the messages uh, main page and deleting this conversation. But the moment that another person were to send a message here, then it would add them again. What if you'd like to remove a person from your group chat? Well, you have to understand a certain quirk about iMessage group chats and group conversations. And that is that Apple and the iOS will not allow you to turn a group chat into a back and forth chat. Meaning if you've only got three people in your group chat, there's no way to simply exit the conversation or remove another person from the conversation. Instead, the way that you would go about doing that would be if you had multiple people. So if it was me, this fake account that I have set up, my partner and a fourth person, then I could remove one person from that in order to keep it down to three. So three is the minimum minimum of a group chat that you can have. At that point, removing a person would obviously turn it into just a back and forth conversation, at which point it would no longer be a group chat. And so it is not possible to remove one person in a three person chat. Instead, you would just create a new conversation or go to the conversation that you already have with that one person that you want to speak to. But once you have uh, more people in the conversation, you know, you're allowed to leave the conversation if you want, and then also pick and prune the people that you want to be part of this group chat. I thought, you know, folks might want to know how they can easily make adjustments to their group chats and turn off those alerts that keep popping up every single time someone sends a new message or shares a new animated image in the conversation. Folks, thanks again for tuning in to this week's episode of Hands on iOS. I do appreciate it. Uh, if you are not subscribed, you can, of course, head to twit.tv slash HOI and subscribe to the show in its various formats, both audio and video. So if you're on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, or if you want to watch on YouTube, well, you can do that. Of course, we are youtube.com slash hands on iOS. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment if you want, and uh, go ahead and hit that bell if you want to be notified every time a new episode publishes. And if you've got questions, thoughts, feedback, apps you want me to review, whatever it happens to be, send those to hands on iOS at twit.tv. Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you next time. 
Be sure to check out the other shows on the network, like my other show, Hands On Wellness. I love to share different tips and tricks that's going to help you get a better grasp on your personal wellness. Just go to twit.tv slash how and subscribe now.